Good afternoon, peeps. Tom and I are back. Um, and we are doing some videos just before lockdown because lockdown's happening again. Um, so we have got Tom with his flight scope. Robo Bob, this is Jeannie's calling. Robo Bob? Yeah. Robo Bob, we've got Robo Bob out. And we are going to discuss basically how the ball curves. What makes it curve. What yeah. makes the ball curve because that's pretty much what our job does, isn't it? Is to make potentially people hit it more efficiently, more repeatable, and stop people practicing random stuff that they have maybe heard from their friend that worked one time. That's the thing, isn't it? It's one time. One this time. one time I hit it the best shot ever. So I'm gonna try and do it again, but I'm gonna keep adding random taps to it. So yes, we are going to try and make a few things clearer and um, let us know what you think. So this is Tom's Robo Bob uh, <laughs> flight scope. So these are what you sometimes might hear uh, launch monitors or um, yeah, launch monitors. Yeah, so pe people hear some of the brand names of Trapman, flight scope, GC quad, but they're all basically doing the same thing. What they do is they measure what's actually going on to help us understand what the balance of the impact factors do. So for a while, it became, oh, you've got to do this. You've got to hit up on the ball with your driver to hit it further, or you have to hit in to out. What these kind of helpers do is we can see a bit more detail. So for example, this is um, from one of my boys the other day. So as well as me getting all the data along the bottom here of what the ball did, so I've got the spin, I've got smash factor, which is a bit of a contentious one, but I've got the club head speed, the ball speed, they're really key things for us. Obviously what the distance is, but it starts to give me a lot of real detailed things like uh, the vertical launch. So that's how the ball takes off, the horizontal launch, what it does towards the target. So horizontal launch is how high it is at impact? Well, the horizontal is whether it's left or right of the, yeah, the intended target line. Dodgy brain. No, it's all right. Because <laughs> the thing is, it's like um, when we see a lot of the data get thrown out, the companies talk in very techy. They talk horizontal and vertical launch. Yeah. And people are like, and some of the companies even talk about horizontal launch and the direction in plus or minus. So they don't say right and left. They just say if it's left of target, it's minus. And if it's above target, it's plus. Oh, gosh, that's technical, isn't it? Really confusing. Yeah. Can be. Yeah. But it starts to give us all that data. What I look at a lot is these numbers here. So I'll make them a little bit bigger. So we've got three numbers, and this is very heavily related to why you will hit a ball with curvature. This number here, that is the direction the club's actually moving in at, at the point of strike, so 9.5 degrees to the right. This number here, where it says H plane, if you imagine your golf swing as this big kind of hoop, yes. that's the direction that hoop's orientated in. So often if somebody's a, a perpetual fader or, cut or slicer of the ball, their swing will tend to be, even if they hit the ball a little bit on the inside with the club at impact, the shape of their swing will always tend to be a bit across the ball. So this lad is quite a good player. He swings it a bit into out. But this is what makes it curve. So, strictly speaking, his club was swinging nine degrees to the right of target. Uh -huh. And his club was looking 8.4 degrees left of that. Wasn't left of target. So you think if it was actually left of the target, it would be kind of 10 degrees. So he's actually got the club face looking a little bit right of where he wants to go but a little bit left of where he's swinging. And so he's can you, because that's quite technical, mm -hmm. and I think people like um, love a good number, but visually, can you just show me what that looks like? So uh, we're just going through that. Uh, what would be the target out here on the range? So we're probably looking down at 200 marker. 200 marker, which is kind of down there, okay. So if we think this alignment pole on the ground, that is the direction our club's moving in. Okay. And with this little lie angle protractor, as this club's coming into impact, it's travelling in that direction, but the club 
is looking slightly left of that. Yep. That's what creates the curvature. The fact that the club's looking left of where it's going. It's, it's a very slight glancing blow. Ooh. Once it becomes a hook or a slice, it becomes a very glancing blow. So it's essentially, we're moving the club in that direction, but the club's pointing slightly left of that, or the loft is pointing slightly left of that impact. So there's my club, there's my loft. So what ball flight, for the people at home, as a right-hander, what ball flight will that create? We'd expect a ball going left of target. Left of target. curving left of target. So starting straight. Slightly right. Slightly right, curving more left. So what have we got here? This is the more technical view. So, so this is the D plane. Okay. So if we look, the green line, let's try to spin this around a little bit. Make it a bit smaller, I suppose. And get it to come around. So let me okay. start that again. So what have we got here then, Tom? So this is what we call D plane. And D plane is quite a techie, golf pro-y thing. So this bottom line here, that's the direction the club was moving in. Mm -hmm. Okay. The red line. The red line. Those people that are colourblind, the bottom. The bottom one. Okay. The top one is where the club, the loft of the club was actually pointing. The orange line, the one that's kind of closest to the top, is where the ball actually goes. So it's a difference between the two. So if I then brought that so it was looking towards our camera, so there we are, there's where the club's going, there's where the club's looking, and the ball will always start pretty close to where the club's looking. Not an absolute, but pretty close to it. When people are talking about like fading and slicing the ball, what do you find they obsess more over the club face or the path or...? Tends to be, they get very... Wait, I think it, we see two things. They might have a bit of information, so they think, oh, I'm, I'm losing the ball to the right. I must be coming across it. When the ball might be starting to the right, so the club face might be pointing over there. So they either get very, very, oh, my path's wrong, my path's wrong. Or they think it's all to do with rolling the wrists over or holding the wrists off. Which is a very confusing way of playing because ultimately, you know, that could just change your timing of your movement. It's kind of quite, um, so there's some people I work with that sometimes you have to get them moving that because they just are very rigid. But I would say that it's kind of quite an old schooly way of yeah. teaching, isn't it? It's just very armsy, very handsy, very based on timing. Um, and if your timing is slightly out, that's when we are missing left and right quite a big miss. And there's, you, there's some, actually kind of old ideas in terms of how we feel we draw and fade the ball that can actually be quite useful for us um, that aren't strictly speaking true yeah but based on a pure feel for someone to kind but of work on, on yeah but on feel they can be really good because it can show us you know it's, I, I, we, we often see it when a lesson you've got somebody who slices the ball you usually show them how to hit a hook because then we can see a big big difference and sometimes some of the older things that aren't based on absolute fact of what happens with the club and ball can actually sometimes help us get into better results. Okay, so now, Tom, we've done um, a draw in or kind of a, a right-to-left ball flight with using the stick and the club face aim, or yeah. you could it loft aim. So now we've got our club moving, you know, more to the inside of the ball. But the club face is still pointing out to the right as we're coming through. So this is what predominantly will get people slicing the ball, fading the ball, however you want to class it. Yeah. One will be more slightly more extreme than the other. Yeah. And it's just again, it's the fact of our club moving in a direction, but the club face not being matched up with that direction is the kind of I would say for me, this is probably the most common swing. I wouldn't even put, well, swing thing. Swing pattern. Swing pattern. Yeah, um, and that's why kind of when you go to driving ranges, so the range I used to work at, the right netting was probably three or four times the size of the left netting. Um, just like, it's just so common. It, yeah, because it's just, it's, 
especially where one of the things that we, we definitely still see with lots and lots of golfers, because they lose it out to the right, what they instinctively do is they think, oh, I've got to somehow get it going left. As yes. soon as I get it doing that, my club is now starting to follow that alignment stick on the ground. So unless I get the club face point in that way, it's gonna curve across. I could, you know, most people, when I measure them on the monitor who slice the ball, will actually have the club looking left of where they'd like the ball to go, but their swing's going even further left. Yeah. And I, vice versa, people who hook it, getting the opposite. But it's often that thing, if they think, oh, I've gotta go left, and they go more a glancing blow, and then we get that horrible flight that everybody hates. So when people talk about why launch monitors are brilliant, um, and they're kind of quite popular now, aren't they, really? I think, they, I think it is really good for people to see what the ball is doing, what the club face is doing, and um, because then we're not guessing it, are we? I think people can sometimes obsess over something that's not necessarily key. So for the same for us, when we're, co we're coaching anybody, you're tending to think of, Right, ball flight is key. Is the ball flight improving? Or what's the ball flight doing? But when I'm then going into the monitor, for all them parameters I'm looking at, I might only be working on one. And ultimately there's three keys that I'm always coming back to. Those three keys are always ball speed. Oops. Spin and whoops, the vertical launch because those three are slow closely related so i can mess around with the other things depending on me, what me and the player think they need to work on but ultimately those three i've got to balance i've got to balance the launch the spin and the ball speed there are keys and, and what i would say with um people that when you're changing your golf swing obviously the strike changes doesn't it so that will affect all of those parameters that we're working on so you'll sometimes get it that someone might hook a ball but they hit it so far off the bottom it then changes the flight of it completely yeah. and it doesn't do what you think it's going to do so strike is the key yeah kind I mean, of we'll, 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 we've talked about we'll, we'll probably do a, a quite a big video at this at one point but if you hit five millimeters between five and ten millimeters off the sweet spot of your golf club, yes. particularly with the driver, you will add around about 600 revs of side spin and change the launch of the ball by three to four degrees. That is crazy. And that's vertical and horizontally. So all of a sudden, you hit it slightly out the heel and your shot that was going dead straight uh, with the wood starts to cut back yeah. and vice versa, or it starts to come off the bottom and climb. So that we can't do anything and then what you find is let's say that they get the ball curving and it's curving left to right and then they right try and compensate like you said and they swing it even further left and then it starts even further, further left right. and so it's if we can get the contact right which like Tom said is we will do a video probably when we get back but it is having something to work on isn't it instead of just battering balls or practicing in your back garden yeah so we were doing some filming and then it's just so much